One, two, there we go. We'll try it again with the microphone. Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen indeed. We welcome you each to our worship service this morning. This is the fourth Sunday in the season of uh, Easter. As part of that, it's called Good Shepherd Sunday because all of the texts and many of the hymns kind of reflect this theme of being a good shepherd. So you kind of see that come across uh, in our text this morning. So with that, we will be following Divine Service Setting 1. It's on page 151 if you would like to follow along in the hymnal. If you're comfy and would like to use the slides, feel free to do that as well. Our opening hymn, because it is the Easter season, before we get into the Good Shepherd stuff, is an Easter hymn, hymn 475, Good Christian Friends Rejoice and Sing. God's blessings to each of you as together we worship the Lord. We rise and we continue with the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our service this morning continues with the Kyrie, sung responsibly, followed by the hymn, This is the Feast. 
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from the death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follows where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. In our first reading this morning, Peter and John continue to confess their faith in response to the questions that arose from healing a blind man. Here they make clear that salvation is found in no name, but Jesus' name. The first lesson for this, the fourth Sunday of Easter, is from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, the fourth chapter. As they were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them. 
greatly annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who had heard the word believed, and the number of men came to about 5,000. On the next day, their rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had set them in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus summarized the commandments of the Old Testament into two basic commands. To love God above everything else and to love our neighbors as ourselves. In our epistle lesson this morning, the Apostle John reminds us again that which is most pleasing in God's sight is not just empty words, but true love and faith in Jesus Christ and love for one another. Our epistle lesson is from 1 John chapter 3. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit whom he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. We sing the Alleluia in the verse. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus frequently used familiar images to describe his relationship to the people of Israel. Today he says, I am the good shepherd. And in doing so recalls the difference between the shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep and the shepherd who simply runs away and protects himself. This description describes how he would later lay down his life on the cross for sinners like you and me. The Holy Gospel is according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as 
The Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also that they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it up from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down, and I have the authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The congregation may be seated. We'll invite the kids forward at this time for a children's message. Um, before we start, can you guys do me a favor? Okay. I seem to have misplaced my prop. Okay. So I had a little sheep because this is Good Shepherd Sunday. And he's not here. Okay. So I thought I left him up here. So can you guys look around up here and see if you can find him? Okay. Can you do that? Okay. Okay. If you see him, go get him, okay? Oh, you guys are fast. All right. <laughs> Good morning. This is Lammy. Say hi, Lammy. No, he's supposed to say hi to you, right? That's silly. Lambs can't talk, right? So, this is Lammy, and Lammy is a sheep. And what do we know about sheep? Do you know anything about sheep? Other than you kind of look like a sheep. You got the sheep wool on you, right? So, what, what, what do we know about sheep? Anything? So, sheep have a tendency to wander off. Did you know that? Just like Lammy just did, right? They have a tendency to just wander off and go do their thing. And so, you know what? Today, Jesus calls himself the good shepherd. And the good shepherd is supposed to take care of sheep, right? And so, when he calls himself the shepherd, what does that make us? That makes us sheep, right? Now, that sounds good, but you know what? Sheep wander off. They do things that they're not supposed to do. And I'll, I'll show you a little bit later some pictures that you might find funny of silly things that sheep do. But sheep need a shepherd. And one of the reasons sheep need shepherds is because I had somebody else bring a stuffed animal up here. Can you bring that thing over here? All right. Now, we did not set this up, right? Did I know that you were bringing this thing? No. No. Apparently, you keep it on a chain. Okay? But sheep need a shepherd because, guess what? There are things like this that love to eat what? Sheep, right? And this is part of the problem because while this has, well, claws and teeth and it runs really fast, right? Because this is a cheetah, leopard, I don't know cheetah, all right, run really fast, what does this do? Walks really slow, right? Does it have long legs? No, it's got little short legs, right? Does it have big teeth that it can fight it with? Does it have strong legs that it can kick it with? Nope. So in order to protect from something like this, sheep need something else. They need a shepherd, somebody to protect it, right, and drive animals like this away, right? And so that's what Jesus says. He says he's the one that protects us from even scarier animals than this, right? He protects us from the devil. But he does it 
when he says, I am the good shepherd, the next thing that he says is, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Do you know what that means? What happens to the shepherd? How does he save the sheep? Yeah, ultimately by dying. And so uh, uh, our good shepherd, the way he does it is by dying on the cross. That's how he protects us from the devil and all the world is by dying on the cross for us. And so that we know whatever happens into our life, no matter how scary things might be, guess what? Our good shepherd has taken care of everything on the cross by laying down his life for us and taking it back up again. And that means you and I can live with him and be taken care of by him forever and ever. And one day, guess what's going to happen, right? Um, one day after the resurrection, when we get to be with Jesus, the Bible also talks about the day when the lion, cheetah, and the lamb will lie down together. Do you know what that means? Will the lion be trying to kill the lamb? No, there will be peace forever. Because the good shepherd takes care of even lions or cheetahs. Thank you very much. Let's, um, let's close with prayer. Dear Jesus, I'm sorry for being a straying sheep. Thank you for being my good shepherd. For taking care of me. For feeding me for protecting me and for dying for me that I can live with you forever and ever. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Thanks for bringing that beastly thing. <laughs> right? Uh, we'll sing hymn 710. This is a, uh, a, a song version of the 23rd song, Psalm. The Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. Him seven ten.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord, and our Savior Jesus the Christ. Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Amen. My dear friends, in Christ Jesus our Savior, if you haven't picked up on it by now, this is Good Shepherd Sunday. It's a turning point in the season of Easter. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been focusing on the resurrection appearances, those gospel lessons that give us uh, the identity of Jesus uh, in body and flesh as he is there in his risen state, the assurance that he did in fact rise from the dead. As we move on, we all of a sudden get to Good Shepherd Sunday and it's it, it's a twist, it's a change, where we're no longer chronologically going through uh, the Easter account, but rather we're talking about Jesus fulfilling this role because of his resurrection. Because he is raised from the dead, this is the relationship we now have with them. And so our Gospels begin to reflect back to earlier teachings that Jesus had, and in this case, it's Good Shepherd Sunday, so it is the teaching that he has in John chapter 10 that he is, in fact, the Good Shepherd. So, a as we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday, one of the things that we have to realize is that Jesus is identifying himself as the Good Shepherd. And if he's the shepherd, as I pointed out with the kids, that means that we're the sheep. Now that may sound good, and you may have this cute little picture of, well, maybe, maybe some sheep like this. Um, those are Old Testament images, right? Uh, Old Testament images that have been built in in all sorts of different ways. So we just sang the song, The Lord's My Shepherd, I'll Not Want, it's a paraphrase of Psalm 23. But we have other passages that also talk about this. So Psalm 79 says, Then we, your people, the sheep of your pasture, will praise you forever. For generation to generation, we will proclaim your praise. Or know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. We are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Psalm 100. Or Psalm 95, 7, we looked at part of this verse as part of our Bible class today. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. So there's this dominant image throughout the Old Testament. But that image also got, gets brought into the New Testament where uh, the Disciple Matthew talks about Jesus this way. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. So you have this relationship that sheep and shepherds need each other. And as I mentioned before, we get these pictures of sheep and all sorts of cute little fluffy lambs like this. And Perhaps that's true to an extent, but there's more to it when Jesus calls us sheep. So sheep, as I kind of talked about with the kids, need a shepherd. They need someone to watch over them and take care of them. And here we're talking domesticated sheep. So for instance, you may not know this about sheep because we probably don't have a whole lot of shepherds, but some of you may have grown up uh, on a farm that had some sheep, but this is a common case with sheep. Sheep have a tendency, this is not a good thing by the way, right? This is like when your fish swims upside down. Um, when, 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 your, when your sheep is upside down, this is a bad condition, right? And so as part of this, um, the, the, the sheep have a tendency because of their build with short little legs and big little fat bellies that when they lay down, if there's any sort of a, a, a give in the land, it'll cause them to rock over. And their legs don't enable them to be able to get upright. So they're kind of like a turtle on its back. 
And when they're like this, they have a matter of minutes before they're dead. And so they need a shepherd to come along and tip them back up the right way and help them or else they'll perish very quickly. This is a picture of Barak. Barak is a sheep in Australia that was lost for six years. For six years, Barak did not get sheared. When he was sheared, 75 pounds of wool came off Barak the sheep. That's a lot of wool. You think of these cute, fluffy little white sheep, but Barak gives you a picture of a sheep who has no shepherd. He gives you a picture of a sheep who is infested with all kinds of stuff and that fluffy white wool is not clean and nice, but it is nasty and gross. Much of that 75 pounds could not be used for any purpose whatsoever. Not only that, but Barak the sheep has a problem. That pretty fluffy wool becomes a hamper for him when he goes and he moves through a thicket of branches, all that wool makes it hard for him to move. He easily gets caught in such a thicket. When he bends down to drink, that fluffy white wool around his face actually can absorb water and cause him to topple into the water, making even just eating and drinking dangerous. For all these reasons, Sheep need a shepherd. But perhaps my best illustration is this one. So uh, as a pastor, uh, my Facebook feed has been filled this last week with this little video. I'm not going to show the video because I didn't know how. But uh, this is a picture of a young shepherd boy who is pulling a sheep out of a crack in the road. And he reaches in and he has him by the back foot and he is trying as hard as he can and gently as he can to remove this sheep out of there. Once he gets him out, and I'll show you the picture, the sheep pulls away from him and then runs off. And can you tell what the sheep does? I couldn't find a picture of it, but the sheep jumps right back into the hole. 20 feet down the line, head first, right back into the hole. Sheep need a shepherd. When Jesus says we are sheep, it's not a compliment. It's not you are little, white, fluffy, uh, uh, nice animals. It's saying we're dumb, we're helpless, and we need somebody to look after us. We need somebody to take care of us. Because all too often, we end up like this sheep. We end up the one who starts off in a situation and, and, and gets freed and then runs for our own independence and finds ourselves in the exact same situation that we were once in. Have you been there? Have you been this sheep? Maybe you're dealing with an addiction. Addictions to all sorts of things, but you're dealing with the same problem over and over and over Somebody helps you out, they help you out of a jam, you're sincerely repentant of it, you want to do better, but the next thing you know, the temptation is too big, and you find yourself sticking your head into that hole again and again. Or maybe you have challenges in your family, that you've got uh, relationship troubles, it could be boy-girl relationship troubles, it could be parent-child relationship struggles, it could be sibling relationship struggles, it can be friend relationship struggles, whatever it is, maybe you have those in your life. And you're, you're dealing with it and you're struggling with it, but you keep finding yourself getting into that same pattern, that same rut of activity and the next thing you know, you're back in the hole. This is a picture of the sheep um, pulling away from the young shepherd boy after he gets him out of the hole. And you can see that the, the sheep is, is so frantic from having gotten out of that hole that he wants nothing to do with the person who actually just saved his life. Are we a little bit like that? Are there times in our life where uh, the second we're saved, we pull away from 
Jesus wanting nothing to do with them. That we all of a sudden continue to follow our own ways of, of dealing with our problems, trying to fix it the best way that we possibly can, but find ourselves in a bigger mess. Can you imagine the sheep? How it got there in the first place? My guess is uh, he might have hopped and missed and, and fallen himself in there, but then he tried to back himself out and get out. And he kept worrying, working and working and working, and yet all that working probably actually did was got him stuck deeper and deeper into the mess. Boy, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? That's the challenge we have. Isaiah 53, something that we've been looking at often lately. Uh, often we look at it during the season of Lent. It's the suffering servant psalm, but talks about us in terms of this relationship of sheep. It says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one of us to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So the picture is of sheep each doing their own thing, getting themselves stuck and in trouble. That's us. And the Lord lays on him, this suffering servant, the iniquity of us all. Jesus claims the mantle of that suffering servant in our text this morning. In John chapter 10, and really it's the whole chapter, chapter 10, but we're looking just here at verse 11 and following where he says, I am the good shepherd. Then he explains what that is. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now, if he's the good shepherd, not just a shepherd or the shepherd, that means that there are not good shepherds. And that's the comparison that's being made. He goes on in verse 12. He who is a hired hand, that's his phrase in this for the bad shepherd, he who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who is not the owner of the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hireling flees because he's a hireling and he cares not for the sheep. This is a picture of my first car. Not exactly because it's gone now. Um, but it's a 1979 Buick Century station wagon. It's not the first car that I had. Beautiful, stylish, brown side panel. We didn't have that fancy stuff. When I was a kid, I didn't treat that car very nice. I didn't care. I would pour stuff on the floor. I would uh, draw on it with crowns. There's even a place in that car when on the... Uh, vinyl seats that we had, I bit a hole in it as a kid. I don't have a clue why I did that. But guess what? Yeah, I'm sorry about that. But um, all of a sudden, I inherited this when I was 16. And you know what? All of, a, all of a sudden, I cared a lot about that car. That car was life for me. Suddenly, whether the oil was changed was important. It was me who took the headliner out of this car and put in a new one so it didn't kind of fall on your head, if you know what I'm talking about. Why do I share this? Because all of a sudden when it became mine, there was a different level of responsibility. And that's exactly what Jesus is talking about. When you're the good shepherd, you care about the sheep because they're yours. And when you're just a hired man, it's just a monetary transaction. Your life isn't as, a, or your life is more important than that of the sheep. And what Jesus is pointing out is, as the good shepherd, his relationship is totally different. And that's good news for us. Because we live in a world where things get rough. And sometimes we don't know where to look, and we don't know where to turn, and we get confused and, 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 and bamboozled, and there's all these places that we look for comfort and security in our lives. There are places that we turn as we look for the good shepherd. The problem is we find not good shepherds. Maybe one of the places you turn is this. 
to your phone or to social media on your phone. You got that awkward moment where you're in an elevator riding way too many stories up with people in there that you don't know and don't want to talk to, and so what do you do? You have one of those moments where you've had a tough day at work, where you've got this uh, a situation that's happening where you're not getting along with people, and it's easier to immerse yourself into a, a, a world of connections and seeing what's happening in other people's life whether it's true or not, because it's more comfortable than dealing with the stuff you've got. And what's interesting is, it's this idea of comfort, it's this idea that it's this good shepherd, and yet it's not. If you watch the movie The Social Dilemma, it's on Netflix, it gives you a, a, a picture of the way social media and, and, and the technology companies have intentionally crafted this to mine you for links and hits and things like that. You go on and you see all sorts of actors or athletes or even politicians weighing in on whatever the, the commentary of the day is. And in each way, they're, they're acting as if they're the good shepherd, as if they're going to take care of you, as if they care about what's going on in your life. But guess what? When it comes down to it, they don't know that you're going to be foreclosed on. They don't really care that you can't make your bills. They don't know, they don't know your name. They don't know what's going on in your life. They don't know the addictions that you're dealing with. They don't know the problems you're facing. Here, I've got to be a good shepherd myself here. Um, they don't know these things. They don't know the relationship struggles that you're facing. They don't know, and they don't really want to know. What they end up doing is using these conversations to get across their agenda, their points, to use you for their own benefit. So at best, they're hired men, Hired men who are there for a, a cash transaction, but when the rubber meets the road, they're quick to bail. Or at worst, they're wolves in sheep's clothing. They're actually preying on you the way our cheetah preyed on our poor little sheep. Right? So Jesus says, I know my sheep. And this is what makes him different. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. Jesus knows. Jesus cares. He cares about what's going on in your life. You may not know what this is. This is a sheepfold. This is the way out in the country uh, that they take care of sheep that are kept after dark to keep those animals away from them. This is a pen that the animals are put in, and sometimes multiple shepherds will put multiple sheep in there, and they'll sleep in this entrance. This is where we get the, where he says, I am the gate earlier on in John chapter 10. They're the ones who block him in. But at the end of the, the, the night, when the morning comes, the shepherds will stand in this entrance and they'll actually stand with their, their legs and they'll call their sheep by name. And each sheep will come listening to the voice of only its shepherd. And as that happens, the sheep will pass between the shepherd's legs and the shepherd will pat down and inspect the sheep to find out all the things that are happening with the sheep. Did it get hurt this last night? Did it get injured? Is it sick? And it takes care of each individual sheep. This is the picture that Jesus is giving. It's very intimate and personal. I know my sheep. And they know me. Our Savior Jesus knows his sheep. He calls us by name. Just yesterday, I got to do a baptism for one of the members of our congregation as Ronan is brought into the family of faith through the waters of baptism. 
as Jesus calls him his own, as he calls him a child of God and gives him the Holy Spirit and makes him not just a member of our congregation, but a member of the church, this great sheepfold that he has. This is the blessing we have. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and he repeats it. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Because that's what it's all about. Ultimately, that's what it's all about, is Jesus pointing out, this is what separates the good shepherd from the hired hand. I lay down my life for the sheep. What's he talking about? He's talking about the cross. He's talking about his suffering and death. The kids pointed us that out to us. But it's that place where Jesus becomes the Lamb of God, where he takes on human flesh, where he's not just the shepherd, but he becomes a sheep so that he can suffer and die on our behalf. This is where John says, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And this isn't just accidental. It's not that uh, this shepherd is just caught in the line of fire, that he is taken down in the line of duty, that the predator gets one up on the shepherd. No, this is the plan. I know, or I lay down my life that I may take it up again. But no one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it up again. This command I have received from the Father. What's the point? The point is, this is God's plan from the very beginning. From the beginning of creation was for him to become a sheep and sacrifice him for us fellow wandering sheep so that we could live with him forever. Hired man? He doesn't care. He doesn't lay down his life for the sheep. He doesn't care. But our Savior Jesus does. That's what makes him the good shepherd. Because he lays down his life for the sheep once and for all. So that we can be his sheep. That we can be taken care of as his sheep. Not just in this life, but for all eternity. But Jesus doesn't stop there. He also mentions something. He says, I have other sheep that are not of the sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. There's a lot that we get just from this voice. The first one being, sheep know the shepherd's voice. Where do we hear the shepherd's voice? We hear it in God's word. This is the place that we gather, is, is to gather in his word, to hear his voice to us as we gather in devotions, as we gather in Bible study, as we gather in worship, to hear those words, those words that link us back to the baptism, right? We begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Or I forgive you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, linking us to what Jesus has done for us on the cross, linking us to being called as part of his family through the waters of baptism. But it doesn't just stop there. He talks about how he feeds and he nourishes us as his sheep, how he gives us his body and blood to equip us and strengthen us for the tough days that we have before us. This is what the psalmist in Psalm 23 talks about when he, he leads leaves a table before us in the presence of our enemies. So sheep do what sheep do. They gather around the shepherd. But there are other sheep, sheep that don't know all these things, sheep that don't know their shepherd's voice, sheep that are lost or astray, looking to any shepherd out there that might be able to help them. And so what do we do as sheep? We gather around our shepherd. We gather around the good shepherd, and as he takes care of us and our contentedness in him, 
witnesses to those sheep that this is the shepherd who takes care of us. And so, in turn, other sheep come to hear his word, come to know his voice, come to know the good shepherd who promises to take care of them as well. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep that we may live with him forever. Amen. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. At this time in the service we rise, we confess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. On the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy, the Holy Christian Church, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We remain standing for the prayers of the church. In peace, let us pray to the Lord that the good shepherd of Israel who has sought out his sheep and gathered us with them into one flock would keep us always in his fold and guard us from every wolf and snare. Let us pray to the Lord. For the church and flock of God, that as new life was breathed into the world through the resurrection of Christ, so now by his Holy Spirit, new life would be breathed into her also. And that freed by his gospel, we may always confess the name of Jesus Christ, the only name given among men by which we must be saved. Let us pray to the Lord for the gift of good government that the Paschal Lamb has wrought peace between man and God so that he would grant peace and good days also to our citizens and between the nations of the world and that we and all our neighbors may lead, lead quiet lives in godly contentment. Let us pray to the Lord. In thanksgiving for our risen Christ, the first fruits from the dead, who has secured forgiveness for our troubled consciousness, consciences, that he would also bless us with temporal health and also those who are suffering. Be with Pat Weedy and Leora Coleman as they recover from surgery. Continue to be with Jesse Nyans, Sean David Doyle, Isaac Bauman, and Gloria Bauman. And also that he would grant us aid, not only in this moment, but even more so true immortal health in the world to come. Let us pray to the Lord. For the Holy Communion today, that our good shepherd would calm all fears in this valley of the shadow of death through the holy table he prepares in the presence of our enemies. That he would give us repentance and an increase of faith that in every tribulation or besetting sin, he would lead us to find comfort and strength in the overflowing mercy given us in this sacrament. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, out of fatherly divine goodness, you remembered us poor, miserable sinners and given your beloved son to be our shepherd, not only to nourish us by his word, but also to defend us from sin, death, and the devil. Grant us your Holy Spirit that even as this shepherd knows us and helps us in every affliction, we also may know him, trust him, seek him, 
and comfort in him. Heartily obey his voice and obtain eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. At this time in the service, we continue with receiving our tithes and our offerings. Before we do that, we invite you to greet your fellow sheep from a distance. Uh, uh, go ahead and, and pass the peace to them. Also, if you don't recognize somebody worshiping with you this morning, that's okay. Make a note of it. Introduce yourselves to them following the service. With that, uh, we're going to go ahead and be seated and sing one of my favorite little hymns uh, as we uh, prepare to set up for the Lord's Supper. Hymn 740, I Am Jesus, Little Lamb. We rise for the service of the sacrament and we continue with the preface to Holy Communion. We sing it responsibly. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, with Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive this salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, to renew, to strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the one true faith to life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. We rise and we sing the post-communion canticle, thank the Lord and sing his praise. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now receive the Good Shepherd's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn, hymn 782. Gracious God, you send great blessings.
Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. You may be seated. Again, thank you for worshiping with us this morning, especially our guests and visitors who are with us in person. Those of you who are worshiping with us online, glad to have you with us. Invite you to worship with us again. 8 and 1045 are our worship times. The 1045 time is live streamed uh, for your convenience. Also, the 930 Bible class, as we go through the book of Hebrews, that is also live streamed. Uh, so if you have to miss a week for whatever reason, you can kind of make that up uh, on your own uh, time. So uh, with that, um, announcements wise, I'm going to keep it short. Uh, please check the bulletin that was sent out to your homes uh, earlier this week. Look at what those announcements are. Uh, we've been announcing most of them uh, quite a bit recently. Uh, probably the one thing I do want to call your attention to is something that did not make the bulletin. Uh, we will be having a youth lock in on uh, May 7th, so that should be the first Friday in May. Uh, so that would be for both junior and senior youth. Uh, so anybody from fifth grade through high school uh, is welcome to be a part of that. Uh, so check that out. Also, I will need some uh, parent volunteers to stay up all night with me just in case I get injured again. Uh, so uh, if, if that's something that you guys would like to do, there's a sign-up sheet for both kids and adults. Uh, because we have both groups and we're trying to be somewhat COVID friendly, for this particular lock-in, we're going to ask no friends uh, to be a part of that just so it keeps our size at kind of our reasonable amount. Uh, so uh, hopefully that's okay. Uh, if not, kind of see me about that. But otherwise, that's the other thing that I'll, I'll, only thing I'll put out. Any announcements that any of you have? Go ahead, Ken. Yeah, so if, 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 there we go. So good to have the Stoop Cures back um, and, and certainly take some opportunity to uh, uh, reacquaint yourselves with them. Uh, they'll be, they're in the process of moving, but, um, and uh, uh, certainly if you haven't met them before, um, I get to know them again or for the first time. Uh, yeah, you, all that stuff. All right, okay. Uh, so, uh, thank you for pointing that out, Ken. All right. Um, any other announcements? Seems like there was something else. Oh, yes. Albert, you forgot to remind me of the second service. I knew there was another. Um, so, uh, a big thing's happening this Wednesday night, uh, at least for our congregation. Um, actually, across the synod, uh, the seminaries do their call night services. This is where pastors learn when and if they're placed uh, to go anywhere. Um, so um, we expect or are hoping uh, that on Wednesday night at the call night service, Albert will be formally placed as a candidate at resurrection uh, to be our new assistant pastor. Uh, so if you would like to uh, participate in that uh, call service, uh, you can do that online as well. So if you go to the CSL for Concordia St. Louis website, which is csl.edu, uh, there it will be a link and everything will be shown there. Uh, if you want to hear a bunch of uh, future pastors and their wives and their families singing, uh, which is always a pretty awesome thing, uh, it, it's a pretty neat service to be a part of. Uh, so uh, by all means, you can access that 7 p.m. on Wednesday night and we expect to hear Albert's uh, uh, voice, uh, or not voice, uh, his name uh, called out there uh, and assigned to us. And then we begin preparations for his ordination probably sometime in the early fall. 
August or September time frame. So uh, kind of a neat, exciting time for us here at Resurrection. So uh, keep that in mind. So with that, um, having no other announcements, I'll greet you at the door. God's blessings on your week.